Hi, and welcome to Section 7, Automating Deployment. In an enterprise environment, you want to follow best practices. It's not reasonable to expect developers to edit function apps in a web-based editor in the Azure portal. This section will show you how you can use source control and infrastructure as code to make Azure Functions a compelling tool for progressive software shops. In this section, we're going to take a look at using Azure Functions core tools, using Git to edit and deploy functions, using Azure Resource Manager, or ARM, to manage our function apps, and talk about how we can use these techniques for continuous delivery. And this brings us to our first video, using Azure Functions core tools. Is there a good tool for developers to use for developing Azure Functions locally? Is it free and easy to use? The answer is yes. In this video, we're going to explore Azure Functions core tools and show you how you can use it to really move forward in your development of Azure Functions. In this video, we're going to take a look at downloading and installing Azure Functions core tools. Then we're going to look at creating new functions from the command line, and then show you how you can edit the functions in Visual Studio Code. Finally, we're going to show you how you can run and test your functions locally on your own machine. In this demo, we want to download Visual Studio Code from code.visualstudio.com, and then it's, it's a free download. It's a very powerful tool. You can download it for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And uh, you can just choose the installer for you if that's not the, detecting it. We're also going to install the Azure Functions CLI, which is now known, now called Azure Functions Core Tools. And it, you can just install this using NPM. So if you don't have Node or NPM installed, make sure you have it. And to install, just type NPM install minus G for global Azure-Functions-Core Tools. And it takes a little while to install, but and once you have it installed, you can do func.azure and do things like, you know, list your accounts, you can list storage, this does here. You can create function apps, um, you can create new functions. In this case, I'm just going to, let's make a folder called Azure Function App, and then I'm gonna go into it, and then I'm gonna initialize it as a function app. So func function app init and you can see it created some files. Let's edit it in Visual Studio Code. So code space dot will open up the Visual Studio Code editor in this folder. You can see the files here. So I click on dot get ignored, steer source control, ignore files, host.json for some host configuration and then local settings JSON. This is for your Azure function app to be configured when you push it up to the server. Uh, what if you want to create a new function? If I do func function create, you get a yeoman generator here and I'm going to choose C sharp and then I'll use HTTP trigger and I can name this function we'll call it sort list of strings and it created these four files here the main one is run.csx and you can see they just created a folder called sort list of strings there if I do code.space here and it opens it up in the visual studio code and you can see sort list of strings with the files that it created let's edit this readme markdown file and I have Visual Studio Code do, to do a preview on the right of my markdown file. And you can set that up with an extension here. But I want this to, if I call the function with a list query parameter, and it will return the list sorted. So foo bar baz will come back as bar baz foo. And so that's how this function will work. Now we need to change the run.csx file. First off, it's not an async task. And so what I'll do is I will uh, take away that stuff. Um, and uh, so I'll just delete the async and the task part. And it still needs to be a static. And then here it was normally taking the name, but now I'm gonna change it to re reading the list from the query string. And if it's null, we're gonna return a bad response. Rec.create response, HTTP status code, bad request, and then some error message. And then uh, I don't need this extra stuff from the query body or from the request body. And what we'll do is we'll sort the list. So let's do a split on the uh, the list that's passed in. So foobar baz with commas will get split out to it and we'll do it as a list. So then I can call dot sort on it. And then I'm gonna return it. And we need to return it as a string. We'll just put commas in between them. So this should sort it. The cool thing here is now we can do func, dot, func run dot, and that will run all the functions in my function app. And so it's gonna run a little server here. Let's bump up the font so you can see this. And it's gonna run on localhost 7071, and there's my function. So if I copy this, I can actually open up Postman and call it. And I'm running the function app locally. 
So I'll open up Postman. And once it fully boots up, I can just, let's maximize here, I can just paste that URL that I copied in my clipboard here. And of course, let's pass in list, and we'll do zoo, foo, cat, and apple, and then, yeah, dog. And then when I, I'll just hit send, and then you can see that it sorted the five strings, and they are in the correct alphabetical order. So I'm calling this Azure function locally, which is pretty cool. I can test it locally before I, you know, publish it and deploy it to my function app. Yeah, um, if I want to change it and just add prepend a list of sorted strings, I can call it locally and you see that it works instantly. I just saved it and the server serves it up. So uh, this is really powerful. You can see the logs on that server window. You also have a git source, contain, uh, source control folder instead of uh, Visual Studio Code. Here I'm just going to leave a comment and commit. And that when I did that func init, it sets it up like a git folder. If I do func function create again, and I choose C sharp, I can make another function. Let's do another HTTP trigger. And this time, let's call it count list of strings. And it creates the four files. And you can see that it created a new folder called count list of strings. So that's where our second function will live. If I open up Visual Studio Code, it sees that folder. Let's change the readme to reflect how it should work. So in this case, uh, count list of strings is going to just return the count of the strings that I pass in. So here, let's just say counts the number of strings pass in like this. And when I pass in a list of foobar baz, it should return three, just like that. And of course we need to actually edit the function. So it does that. So I'm gonna go to my run.csx file and we are going to edit this one. First thing I'm gonna do is change the name to use a list and then check to see if list is null and return a bad create response HTTP status code of bad request. Let's here, let's. Yes, there we go. I wanted my IntelliSense to come back. Need to pass in a list in the query string. And then um, if I were to um, get that number, I want to count it. So I'm just going to do a split and then return the count. Now I can run it here and let's do that it, it's going to boot up that server again remember to hit Control c if you want to get out of this server mode just Control c will kill the server when you have this window in the foreground and if you see here about near the top of the screen you can see the url for count list of strings so i'm going to copy this to my clipboard and i'm going to go back to postman and let's just paste that in there and i'm going to add a list query parameter and i'll pass in some uh, parameters let's do apple zoo cat dog and we should expect a four and we do get a four back which is perfect just like we expected and i can commit this to git it's it's always good to keep all your source control in, uh, or all your code in source control so let's summarize we downloaded and installed azure functions core tools we created new functions from the command line and then we edited the functions in visual studio code then we showed how you can run functions locally on our own machine and test them with postman